Well, it seems the Green Party wants to target alcohol beverage companies. Chloe Swarbrick says uh, she's drafted a members bill banning alcohol sponsorship and advertising. Public opinion over the last decade shows general support for banning it, especially in cases where under 18s are exposed to it. But is banning advertising altogether really the way forward and is now the right timing? Chloe joins us now. Good morning to you. Morena, okay. What exactly would this bill be banning? Are we talking all sponsorship and advertising of all alcohol in New Zealand? Yeah, so look, I think it's important to contextualise all of this discussion, right? Because first and foremost, we have to recognise the least that we can do with the amount of alcohol harm in this country is stop promoting the most harmful drug that we have. And just to give some context there, alcohol generates around $1.1 billion in excise tax, but the really conservative estimates of the amount of harm that it produces per ACC, uh, justice, kind of lost productivity and police time is $7.85 billion in cost per year. And that's the conservative estimate from the Ministry of Health end of town. The far more extreme estimate is $70 billion from the likes of Alcohol Action, the NGO that is really concerned with alcohol harm in the country. So you also have a 2010 Law Commission review which said to end alcohol uh, lifestyle advertising. And then you had a 2014 ministerial form on, uh, forum rather on advertising and sponsorship, chaired actually by none other than rugby league legend Graham Lowe, which said to ban alcohol sponsorship of uh, events and sports and to restrict broadcasting, particularly where uh, anywhere less than or rather anywhere more than 10% of the audience is younger than 18. So what's proposed at present in the draft members bill, which I have had actually in my back pocket since 2019, have been trying to socialise with different MPs across the aisle, haven't had much luck, I can't say if that's by virtue of lobbying or otherwise, is to, from a starting point, just say, what is the place of alcohol advertising and sponsorship in our society? Because we know that in the process of negotiating this, it's highly likely to get wolfed down. So look, we need to end uh, the glamorisation, normalisation and continued socialisation of one of the most harmful substances that we know of. Bit of a fight on your hands potentially though in terms of sponsorship of professional sport. There'll be a few people upset about that. What do you reckon the public support for the bill will be? Well, we know, as you cited at the top, that public support has actually been in favour of a move like this for a really long time. And again, that's why I cited the chairmanship in 2014 of that ministerial forum by rugby league legend Graham Lowe. There is a recognition of the role right now that liquor companies play in continuing to keep uh, sports on side and in turn afloat. We also know the flow on effects of that. You know, the ACC reports that uh, alcohol is associated to one in four track, track offences, one in two serious violence offences, one in five uh, traffic crashes, one in two drug or antisocial charge, one in three family violence call-outs. All of these things contribute to and accumulate harm. And no one's saying that you shouldn't be able to have access to a drink or otherwise. This does nothing to inhibit access. It simply says, let's stop promoting it. And I think the same kind of arguments actually could have been made when it came back to the discussions that we were having a few decades about when it came to tobacco advertising. There's a reason that this is a multi, multi, multi-million dollar industry. Chloe, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it. Chloe Swarbrick, Green Party MP, spokesperson for drug law reform, and she's got this private member's bill wanting to ban alcohol sponsorship and advertising.